Hello everyone, I'm Andreano Lanus, and just a computer staff actor for VMware. I want to welcome you to another deep dive on Unify Access Gateway. This time we're going to be covering the 3.6 release and I'm going in depth in all new features. To get started, let's take a look at the new edge service, Secure Email Gateway. Secure Email Gateway, also known as SAG, helps to protect on-premise email infrastructure, practicing all communication requests. It enables mobile email management in Workspace One UEM, allowing IT administrators to manage policies to enforce and restrict access. As an example, IT administrators can restrict access to approved devices, limit use of specific email clients, block compromised devices to access emails, encrypt the attachments and force them to open Workspace One content app, and much more. Secure Mail Gate has been around for a long time, deploying standalone servers on Windows Basic, and we have thousands of customers using around the world. Secure Mail Gateway now joins Unify Access Gateway 3.6 as a edge service. It's based on the SAG v2 platform using the same binary, fully supported by Unify Access Gateway, where you can take advantage of TLS port sharing and high availability component of UAG. The configuration steps are easy and straightforward. In this release, we consolidated our UEM Edge service into one single platform, allowing our customers to take advantage of multiple use cases that they can use across the appliance. From the architecture perspective, Secure Mail Gateway is deployed inside a container on the Fire Access Gateway. Everything is handled by the appliance. The container has their own network and the communication happens through the host network all the time. You don't need to worry about on how to do that deployment in the same way that how you enable other edge services is going to be the same way for Secure Mail Gateway. Everything is handled by the appliance. Other logs, configuration files are available through a common file system, which is the one that you access into the appliance. There is no need to go anyplace else. And external internal communication is handled across the host network. From the network ports perspective, you have a couple new ports here. The first one is the SAG port, the local port that SAGs run on the Unify Access Gateway, which is 11443. The external communication on the UAG goes through the 443 using TLS port sharing or 11443 in case you want to use the standard port. Communications to the SAG admin APIs to use the health and diagnostic pages as well go through the ports 44444 and is available only through the management NIC when you deploy multiple NICs. In case you deploy one single NIC, that will be available to that single NIC. And when you enable cluster in, uh, in, if I, in, in Secure Email Gateway, you're going to have two ports for the clustering communication, the 5701 and 41232, which are the standard ports used by SAG for uh, all the deployment types that you have been doing prior to that on the Fire Access Gateway. If you look at the diagram now, so that's how it's going to look like. So the email client box and native email clients is going to, or other services like Workspace One UEM Device Service API is going to be communicating to the port that you configure on your Workspace One UEM console, 443 or 11, 443. So all those communications go to the host network that communicates with the secure email gateway edge service to the port 11, 443, which is a local port. Uh, the 4444 port for the SAG API communication is available to the management NIC, like I mentioned before, and the host network and the communication with the email server from the secure email gate will happen to the host network. In case you enable clustering, so when you have multiple secure email gates deploying high availability, the two ports for clustering communication is going to be enabled here. And based on the configuration that you perform on the UEM console, we're going to check that later. So you're going to have that communication going through the uh, management NIC when deploying UAG with multiple NICs. So that communication is important because Secure Email Gate is going to be using that to synchronize policies configuration across all the Secure Email Gateway uh, services deployed onto net your network. So on the Workspace One UEM console, it's important to remind that when you provide the configuration of clustering, you in the past, when deploying Secure Mail Gate on the Windows server, you could specify host name or IP address. Now deploying Secure Mail Gateway 
uh, through Unify Access Gateway, you must provide the IP address for the for the for the secure mail gateways. And when that is related is a deployment using multiple NICs, that that IP address must be the IP address related to the management NIC. Host name is not supported and must be the IP address. Let's take a look on how to perform the configuration of Secure Mail Gateway on UEM Console and Unify Access Gateway. Let's get started with the UEM Console. The first step is to go into the Mobile Email Management configuration on UEM Console and add a new email configuration. You can have multiple email configuration. Each one of those configurations is going to be associated to one Unify Access Gateway appliance. You can see here that you have the deployment model that you're going to be using proxy, which is the one that you use for Secure Mail Gateway. And the platform that you have to select is the V2. That's the one supported by Unify Access Gateway. You define the email type, the exchange version that you're going to be using. Then we move into the next step, which is the deployment configuration. We start providing a friendly name for that email configuration and then configure the external URL import, which is going to be used by UEM console to update the configurations and policies into security mail gateway. The port here can be a specific port for that update of the configuration, the communication from console into security mail gateway. And the host name as part of that URL is going to be used by the device to leverage email traffic through UAG. The port communication from the device into UAG to reach Secure Mail Gateway it is defined to the listener port. It can be different from the port used on the external URL. You can also configure the SSL for Secure Mail Gateway, but the configuration for the SSL here needs to be done uploading the uh, Secure Mail Gateway SSL certificate. They update locally, which would allow you to upload that certificate directly into UAG. It's not supported in 3.6 release, so you have to upload the certificate here into the UEM configuration. And finally, you define the email service settings, which is the definition of where is the email server and port that is going to be getting providing access to the devices through security email gateway. Moving on, so we the next step on the on the deployment it's in case you are deploying uh, secure mail gateway, multiple secure mail gateways in high availability, it's highly recommended that you enable the, the clustering. So in this case, when you enable the clustering, you have to provide the IP address uh, for all the secure mail gateway that you have in, in clustering. So again, do not uh, set the host name here for Unify Access Gateway, for Secure Mail Gateway deployment on Unify Access Gateway, you must provide the IP address for all of those uh, uh, SAG hosts. So that's the configuration that needs to be performed on the UEM console. When you hit save, so that will generate what we call a main configuration grid, which is that code here that you can see on the screen that's generating available on the on the mobile email management configuration you move into the you uh, on the admin ui on faxes gateway and now you can see there is a new secure email gate gateway settings on the edge services settings you just configure the api server api server username password and provide the host name which must be the same that you use for the external url uh, external uh, url on the uem console Provide the main configuration grid, which each one of the email configurations that you have done on the UEM console will provide a unique grid for you there. In case you want to deploy and use Unify Access Gate or have availability component, make sure that your external URL on UEM console and the host name on the admin UI match and they are must be resolving the virtual IP address that you have on Unify Access Gateway. Uh, independent of the high availability, so the external URL and the host name for Secure Mail Gateway always must match so that the Secure Mail Gateway can obtain the configuration uh, uh, of the service on Unify Access Gateway. As I mentioned, high availability component on Unify Access Gateway fully supports Secure Mail Gateway. 
how the traffic must go through the 443 port. And when an email client requests access to the internal email, it will hit the high availability component. So the high availability component will use list connection algorithm to decide where to forward the traffic. So, and the secure email gateway with list connection is gonna be receiving that traffic first. So it forward the traffic to the secure email gateway service, which then acts as the email server service. If a second client tried to connect using the same uh, virtual IP address in the same port, high availability component will look through another, it will look through all the Unify Access Gator appliance and the ones with list connection is gonna be receiving that traffic. So in this case, I have the second secure email gator here, which just received the traffic there. So, and you can see that there is, I have in this case, two Unify Access Gator appliance with secure email gator enabled and the clustering, uh, it's enabled in both here in this scenario. So the communication in this case is going through the internal NIC because I'm, and I'm assuming that configuration, I have two NICs here. So in the management NIC is the one where the traffic for the cluster is going back and forward. In case you deploy in Fire Access Gateway using PowerShell and want to enable secure email gateway, there's a couple INI settings that were added to the PowerShell. So we have a new section called AirWatch Secure Email Gateway, which includes the main configuration ID that you will obtain on UEM console, the API server username, URL, and password, and the AirWatch server host name, which is really the SAG host name. You also have a new parameter on the uagdeploy.ps1 script, the AW SAG API server PWD, which allows you to pass the API server password to deploy and configure the Unify Access Gate in a silent mode without any dialogue or asking you for a password. That helps you to automate the deployment and have Unify Access Gate with Secure Mail Gate read on the first boot. After you deploy Unify Access Gate and have Secure Mail Gate configured, there's a couple of tools that you can leverage to test the connectivity and make sure the services are up and running. You can start with the workspace on your EM console, go into the email configuration that you just added, and use the test connection button. The test connection button will check the certificates and on the appliance and also the cert API SSL certificate if that is trusted. So in, during that test, you're gonna see test, communication tests between Workspace Run UEM and Secure Mail Gateway, as also communication tests between Secure Mail Gateway and the UEM API server. You can also make a test on a browser navigating through the Unify Access Gate to FQDN using an endpoint that connect, is connected to an external network. When you hit that endpoint, you're gonna receive a OK. If you receive that OK, it means the connection is successful and the secure email uh, gateway ad service is responding to your request. Another tools that you can leverage as well for troubleshooting is the health and diagnostic page, which is gonna be access uh, you're going to be able to access through the 44444 port. And that's it's available again through the management NIC when deploy the NIC with uh, the Unify Access Gate with multiple NICs or deploy to a single NIC when you deploy the appliance with one single NIC. You can look the health of the service, look at the compliance data, the proxy activities, and the clustering as well. And also, you can leverage, use the diagnostic page to obtain information about the service itself, the service is running. You can also look through the logs and the logs are available as part of the UAG Log Archive bundle that you can deploy, that you can download from the UAG admin UI. And there is a couple new logs there. So the first one that in case you are having initialization issues caused by incorrect API server credentials or ports, check the appliance agent log. That's the first one that you should, should look. And that's the, that log is an existing log uh, on Unify Access Gateway. So it pretty much contains all the information of the service when they are starting. You have now a new folder, the SAG folder, which contains logs specifically for the activity related to the edge service, to the SAG edge service. So we, I, we mentioned four here on that slide, which are pretty much the most common that you're gonna be using. Uh, you can also lose the, use the PS log, which helps you to identify saggy container process and assigned ports running on the appliance. 
And in case you want to log it to the console on the appliance, you can go into the var slash log slash VMware slash docker slash sag to obtain all those logs. Let me show you a quick demo on how to configure and deploy Secure Email Gateway with Unify Access Gateway. Let's start with the configuration on Workspace Run New EM console that starts under Email Settings under the Mobile Email Management module of the console. You can add multiple configurations for mobile email management on Workspace Run New EM, and each of those configurations is going to be associated with one Unify Access Gateway appliance that will have Secure Email Gateway Edge Services enabled. In this case, I already have a configuration here where I'm using V2 platform, which is required for Unify Access Gateway. My email type is Exchange, and I'm a, I have a Exchange 2016 on the back end. That's my, the version of my internal email server. The next step, we move into the deployment configuration. We start setting a friendly name for the email configuration and then define the external URL import. That would be used by UEM console to update the policies and configuration on security mail gateway. The host name on that URL is gonna be used by the devices to communicate with Unify Access Gateway until it reaches the security mail gateway. The port using that URL is specific for the updates from console into security mail gateway. The listener port is the port responsible for the email traffic. It can be different from the one using the external URL. The devices will reach Unify Access Gateway and then use that port to access the service through Unify Access Gateway. It's required to upload the Secure Email Gateway server SSL, upload locally. Uh, it's an option to upload locally on the appliance, which is not available on this release. For the email server URL import, you're gonna be configuring the URL import for the email server that you have hosted on your internal network. A couple additional configurations regarding security, if you desire to do that. And at the end, you see the configuration of for clustering. If you are enabling clustering, you have to add all the IPs related to the cluster nodes, cluster hosts that you have as part of this deployment. Remind that when deploying Secure Email Gateway on Unify Access Gateway, you have to inform the IP address and not the host names. The port is defined by default. That's it. So that's the configuration that you have to do for on the Workspace ONE UEM console. The next step now is to look through the INI file if you are deploying using PowerShell. In this case, I have my INI here, so I give a name for that instance as UAG1. Uh, that will have two IPs, so that specific appliance will be deployed with two IP address. I'm enabling high availability component from Unify Access Gateway here. And then I have the session AirWatch Security Mail Gateway, which contain the main configuration ID generated by Workspace Run UEM console. In addition to that, the API server username and URL as the host name that will be associated with that service. I have a second INI because I'm deploying actually three instances of Unify Access Gateway here. The three INIs, they are pretty much the same, except that each one has one internal IP address and another external IP address, as also the names of the appliances, they are uh, unique here, so they cannot be the same. All of them use the same virtual IP address, 192.168.110.50, and they are part of the group ID 50. We initiate the deployment of the other three appliances using PowerShell. We fast forward here, and each one of those IP addresses is getting their respective, which one of those appliances are getting their respective IP address. When you look in vCenter, I have the three IP address, uh, the three appliances here, each one of them with their respective IP address. That UAG1 is the master appliance at this point. And you are seeing here three IP addresses because you have the two IP addresses for the host network on the appliance and one additional for the IP address of the container where Secure Mail Gateway is running. Let's check that configuration on Unify Access Gateway console and you can take a look that 
each one of those appliances contain the secure email gateway settings. You can check here all the configurations that I made it through the PowerShell script. Also, you see that the high availability is enabled and they are part of the virtual IP address specified before on the INI settings. The second console for the second instance of the appliance, let's take a look on that as well. It remains exactly the same uh, configuration as the previous one for the security email gateway. And in this one is the second instance, it's in backup state for the high availability component on Unify Access Gateway. Now that I have uh, this, the third one is the same, so let's move forward here. Uh, all the appliance is up and running. I test connection on UEM console. You can check it out here and see that the communication is working properly. So I'm good to go in this case and perform the configuration of my Boxer app. So I'm gonna use as a test here the Boxer app to deploy the email to all the devices. And I'm gonna be deploying in man mode only so that there's no management of the device, only the application. And the configuration of, uh, of the Boxer app here, I mean, defining that the host name for the active sync is the uagvip.rwf.com and not the internal host name of the Exchange server. The username, email address are coming from lookup fields on the user account. And when I add that and I deploy through a saving publish, those configurations is gonna be available for uh, the users that go into the Workspace One app and enable uh, and install the application on their device. I switch here to the Workspace One app on the catalog and I'm installing now the box set app on my device. So this is a use case where I'm using man mode only. I'm not using MDM to manage the device. Uh, the user launched the application. It has to accept the terms of use, provide his password, and with the authorization now to access the calendar, the contacts, and allow Boxer to send notifications, the user is able to download the emails, uh, also look the calendar, so daily, weekly, monthly, and see that all the appointments are there and available. As also, look all the contacts available on the, on the Exchange server, so that we enable the user to access internal mail access through security email gateway using Unify Access Gateway. And that concludes the security email gateway ad service deep dive. Let's move to the next stop now. Migration from Tunnel Proxy to Per App Tunnel. In order to enable native mobile apps to access internal resources from managed devices, you leverage the Workspace ONE SDK integrated with the Tunnel Proxy component from VMware Tunnel. Moving forward, we consolidated all those access through the Per App Tunnel. With the new Tunnel SDK, which is a new module on Workspace ONE SDK, you can access internal resources from a managed device just leveraging the Per App Tunnel component of VMware Tunnel. That new module supports the main use case without the need of Tunnel App installed on the device. It requires the UEM console 1905 and is a full replacement for the Tunnel Proxy use cases. With that new approach, you're gonna be able to leverage the device traffic roles and have a much better traffic management from the console. Also, a lot of performance improvement from the client just because of the fact that you are using the Tunnel, uh, the SDK. Uh, and also improve security with things like SSL, Pining, TLS channel, and so on that today is already leveraged through the Per App Tunnel. You're also gonna be able to uh, leverage non-HP traffic as the, tunnel, the Per App Tunnel supports UDP protocol. The Workspace ONE Web App 7.6 release, it's already integrated with the Tiny SDK. It's the first app to receive the SDK. The migration is seamless for the end user, so the end user will not notice anything different on the client, on the device. And all the chains are really guided by the administrator into the UEM console. So as soon as those configurations are applied into the console, uh, it will pull down the configuration into the devices to the profile sync schedule or when the user restarts the web app. 
for unmanaged use cases uh, when we are deploying through man mode only. So the device, just a reminder, the device must be registered through the Workspace ONE app. Let's take a look at the steps to perform the migration. They are pretty much defined in three major steps. The first one, take notes of all current app tunnel URLs that you have configured on your YAM console under the tunnel proxy configuration. Take those URLs and add those under device traffic URLs for the Workspace ONE web app. On the UEM console 1905, you're gonna be able to see now all the apps that you have on your console, and not only the apps that have per app, uh, per app VPN profile assigned. After you perform that, you just go back to the SDK configuration and switch the app tunnel mode from tunnel prox to VMware tunnel. In case you still have apps that are based on the SDK, and they need to continue work with the tunnel proxy, you just enable the tunnel proxy for backward compatibility. And that will allow you to use apps based on the tunnel SDK and apps that continue based on the tunnel proxy. You can leverage both. Ignore the allow all known FQDN URL through app tunnel. That doesn't apply to the VMware tunnel. After you perform that configuration and you make the switch to the tunnel SDK, ensure that all the device has been migrated and the user has, is successfully having access to the internal websites. With that in hand, you're now able to perform uh, the change on the UEM console and disable the tunnel proxy under the enterprise integration. After disable the proxy, you can restart the Unify Access Gateway Appliance to obtain the new configuration or just go into the admin UI and disable and enable the VMware tunnel. After that, the service will restart and tunnel proxy is no longer being enabled. So the port 2020, that's the default port for tunnel proxy is no longer need, no, no, no longer need to be uh, uh, available and the service will not be available as well. Let me show you a quick demo on how to configure the Tiny SDK on Workspace ONE UAM console. I have on this environment my device uh, managed by Workspace ONE app. So I'm in man mode here, so it's not the device, the full device managed by using the hub app. And the first step, as you can see, is to go into the SDK configuration under the status and policies, security policies. You can see that I have the AirWatch app tunnel and I'm enabling the app tunnel mode as VMware tunnel. Uh, I can enable the backward compatibility here, but in this case I'm not because that's the I have just that app running on the environment. So and then uh, with the first step here I just enable the, the, the SDK configuration. I go now into the VMware tunnel configuration and I already have my Infaxis gateway deployed. The client authentication that I use here is AirWatch. So the third party is not supported yet by Tunnel SDK, so make sure that you have to be using the AirWatch certificate in this case. And then I go into the device draft rows and I assign the uh, web app to the device traffic rows. I have the iOS and the Android version. And the Tunnel action I'm going to be adding the corp.local URL. So I'm trafficking all the traffic going to the corp.local on this environment to the tunnel SDK. Now the next step is to go into the Workspace ONE app, web app configuration, and let's check how the assignment for that app is configured. I have that app assigned it to all the devices. In this case, I'm gonna make a change here and I'm gonna be assigning that app to a smart group that I created that only deploys that app on devices that are uh, managed by a Workspace ONE app in main mode. So that's no need to be managed the application and I'm gonna save and publish. When I save and publish, so I'm gonna make that app available to the end user to install on their device. 
and start using. So let's now switch to my device. I have an iPad and I launched the Workspace ONE app. And you're gonna be able to see that the Workspace ONE app is here available. The user is gonna be required a Steam to install. That opens the Apple Store. I start the installation process and that will download the web with the tunnel configuration that's coming down as soon I launch the web app. The user is going to launch the web app. It will and it will obtain the tunnel configuration uh, as it loads the app. And I define the VMware web page as the home page here. So now the and this traffic is not getting uh, tunneled by the tunnel SDK. I have a bookmark to the internet.coco.local and that's the traffic that's going to the tunnel SDK. So I just access my internal website using the tunnel SDK with the Workspace ONE web app. And that concludes the migration topic from tunnel proxy to per app tunnel. Let's move now into the biggest priority in Fi Access Gateway, security. And I want to show you some of the new features on that area. In this release, we added OCSCP sampling support, which enable certificate validation during SSL handshake when you Fi Access Gate to applying certificate contain the OCSCP responder information. This is a very important feature because it increases security and allows Unify Access Gate to, to achieve A plus uh, score in compliance with HIPAA and NIST guidelines for Horizon and Web Reverse Proxy and Identity Bridging Edge Services. It also allows Unify Access Gator to achieve compliance with PCI DSS requirement for all edge services. We also added SAML JWT artifact validation support. When users launch Horizon Desktop or apps from Workspace ONE, a SAML JWT encoded artifact is generated by Identity Manager and used by Horizon Client XML API requests. So Unify Access Gator 3.6 now has the ability to validate the artifact and the DMZ, and when valid, it will forward that to the connection server. Otherwise, access is gonna be blocked into the DMZ. So that means that all the types of Horizon traffic coming through UAG is fully validated by Unify Access Gateway, including those that are launched from Workspace ONE. For the same artifact validation, uh, we need the public key certificate for the JWT signing that must be uploaded on UAG to validate the JWT's signature. VMware has filed a patent for Gateway JWT Trust regarding that feature. And also uh, the JWT settings can be done through the admin UI or through PowerShell uh, with the new JWT settings. So all the keys that you're gonna be passing on the PowerShell must be in the PEM format. Let me give you a little bit more insight on how the SAML JWT processing works from Identity Manager to the connection server. Everything starts in the browser when the user launches a Horizon resource. It hits the Identity Manager and the Identity Manager generates the SAML assertion, the artifact, and the view URL containing the JWT SAML artifact. With that URL in hand, so the Horizon client is launched from the view URL. It hits the UAG. In this case, we are looking to the 3.5, which forwards that SAML artifact to the connection server. And performing that authentication through the XML API request, it will hit the connection server that will perform the SAML resolve against the IDM. Identity Manager validates the artifact and returns the assertion. And that returns the OK response to the client saying the user is authorized. With UAG 3.6, what changes is that authentication on the DMC. When the JWT SAMR artifact reaches the Unify Access Gateway, Unify Access Gate will perform that validation on the DMZ. And if it's valid, it will forward that SAMR artifact to the connection server. The validation now happens on the DMZ and if that's not valid, it will not go through the internal network to perform the validation. As part of the radius authentication method, we added the capability to restrict access based on class attributes for Horizon Edge services. When the IT administrators define radius attributes on the radius servers, those attributes are returned as part of the access accept packet 
that the radio server sends to UAG. When the radio class attributes are defined on the Fi Access Gateway, in Fi Access Gateway we will perform the validation and check if those attributes are part of the response. If those attributes doesn't match the ones based on radios and the Unify Access Gateway, the Horizon client will show an error message to the user showing access denied, not authorized. With this capability, we are supporting customer requests that would like to leverage class attributes during the authorization process and also enhance the secure authentication for radios use case. Let's now move into the networking topic where I'm going to show you some of the new enhancements that will make easier for IT administrators to manage network settings on the Fi Access Gateway. A new UAG INI setting has been added, supporting IT administrators to explicitly set the host name of the appliance at deployment time when using PowerShell. By default, appliance host name gets assigned based on what is defined on the DNS, and with the new UAG INI setting, you can explicitly set that, in addition to what the name, names that you already have been defined on the DNS. A random name will be generated when the UAG name is not defined and will look like, like UAG-BB numbers and so on, so you can see here on the screen. The UAG name is related to the host name of the appliance and we still have the name property which defines the name of the appliance uh, that you see on the vSphere web client. So those are two different things, it's important to clarify that here. So the UAG name property is under the general session the INI for partial deployment and you can also see that on the UAG console and that can be changed that as well. Regarding the network protocol time server support which allows time synchronization between Unify Access Gateway and NTP servers, we added the capability that allow IT administrators to configure the NTP servers during deployment via PowerShell or via admin UI. So there are two types of configurations that can be done here. One, you define the primarily NTP servers, and then you set the fallback NTP servers. The fallback NTP servers will be used when no information is found after searching for NTP servers. Uh, whatever change you make on the NTP servers or fallback NTP servers will restart the time sync service on the appliance, and also those configurations can be updated through the uh, REST API available on the Fi Access Gateway. Important tip here when configuring the NTP servers. So first, when you download the UAG log bundle, you're gonna get the default time sync conf, which provided the default values to be used by the time sync service when the NTP servers are not reconfigured by admin. Out of the box, UAG used the NTP service from Google to configure by default the times of the appliance. Also, the Time sync config contains the current configuration used by the time sync when the admins define their uh, NTP servers and the fallback servers on the admin UI or to PowerShell. In case the NTP servers is reachable from Unify Access Gateway and sync is still failing, it's important to check if the UDP port 123 is open and allow it on the NTP server for Unify Access Gateway communication. Simple Network Management Protocol or SNP support is added to this release, allowing organizations that use third-party tools to manage and monitor their network, devices connected to the network, to collect information as well about Unify Access Gateway Appliance. Uh, when enable the SNP on Unify Access Gateway, the organizations are going to be able to collect system statistics, memory, including VMware Tiny Web Service Management Information Bases. To enable SNP on Unify Access Gateway, you, just, you can enable through system configuration on admin UI or through PowerShell. By default, SNP is gonna be disabled. And when disabled, the appliance will return a no response for those monitoring tools. In case you are not familiar with the SNP response, here example based on Unify Access Gateway configuration. On the left side, you see the results when the SNP is enabled, results for system statistics, memory, and the tunnel edge service. On the right side, you can see SNP disabled and the appliance returning no response, not allowing the monitoring and collection of information for the appliance. DNS and DNS search configurations are now available through the admin UI. You no longer need to log into the command line to update those settings or change configuration files as well. Regarding the DNS, you can have up to two DNS entries per appliance, 
And regarding the DNS search, you can have up to six DNS search entries per appliance as well. Specific on the DNS search, which can be configured through PowerShell as well with the new DNS search entry, uh, this eliminated manual configuration for our customers migrating from Content Gateway standalone to Unify Access Gateway. In many cases, the customers configured repositories on Content Gateway using the short names, and now with the DNS su search support, uh, you can perform that migration seamless. You continue using the short names and let the DNS search perform the resolution for uh, the, the names with the domain suffix. It also is going to be uh, important for the IT administrator now that they can manage all the DNS settings without the need to log in on the, on the console login and also redeploy the appliance. IPv4 static routes configuration is now available through the admin UI. Under the networking settings, you're going to be able to add and remove the routes for each NIC that you have available on your appliance. So you can add the routes followed by the gateway, and when the gateway address is not specified, so the 0.0.0.0 is going to be added by default. Also, at the moment, you save the change that you make in the routes, so the NIC will be restarted. So this is an important uh, feature and huge benefit for our IT administrators that they have now a friendly interface to manage their, those routes and they don't need to log on the console and also not rede don't need to redeploy the appliance to make those changes. Those changes can be made as well through the REST API available in the Fire Access Gateway and you can look the REST slash v1 slash config slash NIC to make the changes for each NIC that you have available in your appliance. Last but not least, let's take a look at the deployment enhancements using PowerShell on Unify Access Gate 3.6. The PowerShell script that comes with Unify Access Gate 3.6 provides support for get help command on PowerShell. There are three parameters added to provide the detailed information on how to execute the uhdeploy.ps1 script. You can use examples, detail, or full parameters that will provide you different levels of information regarding the script. In addition to that, we also have the capability now to silent deploy Unify Access Gateway and at the same time enable UEM Edge Services. Prior to that, you were prompted to provide the API server passwords when enabling one of the UEM Edge Services. You can now pass those passwords as parameter when executing the UAG deployment script. And it's important to remind that when you deploy those through command line, you leave your password as the command line on the command line history it's important to clear the cache of those that you don't leave the password available for others to access as well you have like five different parameters to pass the api password it all depends on how you configure your ini settings you can just use the aw api server pwd which is related to the airwatch session on the ini or use the other ones that are related to the uem at services section available on the ini side that's it for the Unify Access Gateway 3.6 release. If you want to learn more, visit techzone.vmware.com and access the Unify Access Gateway learning path, where you can learn it through videos, tutorials, operational guides, reference architectures, and much more about Unify Access Gateway. Thank you and see you soon.